So I have something here. Take a look at this. Yeah, right. What do you see? Right. It's a cardboard box. Right. Well, my four-year-old daughter, Aaliyah, when she sees one of these sitting on my front doorstep, she gets excited. She gets curious. She wants to know what's inside. And naturally, she wants to know, is it for her? Well, if her sister, who's two years old, is also standing there, she begins clapping and jumping up and down. And pretty soon, they're shrieking in excitement and running around the house and asking, what is it? What is it? Can we open it? Can we open it? And they run to it. We open it. We pull out what's inside. And it's vacuum cleaner bags. And <laughs> Quite what they had expected. Their excitement sort of dies down as mine does too with vacuum cleaner bags and light bulbs. But then they look. And now what do they see? Now they see an empty box. And oh my god, what can't you do with an empty box? It could be a bed for their stuffed animals. This one's big enough, it could be a bed for them. It could be a house, a fort, it could be anything. And my children are no exception to I think most children, if not all children. Children are so filled with awe and wonder every day with ordinary things like an Amazon box that I heard somebody say shows up at their front door every day. <laughs> but that's children. They have that excitement in them. They know what awe and wonder is, and they know in every moment of every day. But then we grow up, and we tell ourselves that we maybe lost the capacity for awe and wonder. Maybe the world has robbed us of that. We wake up to the same routines. We see the news, the same news, day in and day out. We're with the same people, or maybe we're without those people that we wish were still with us. Our jobs are stressful, families are stressful. This time of year can be stressful. It's stressful getting older, facing retirement. And at the end of every day, maybe we're just so exhausted that we think there's no energy left for awe and wonder. And we wake up in the morning and we think, I just need to get through today. We look at our children and we say, I really hope that they do not lose that sense of awe and wonder. And so we pray that that will not happen. But we know one day it most likely will. God willing, not too soon. So our gospel lesson today in Luke, the world that we see in here, is a world that's not unlike the world we find ourselves in today. It's a world that hasn't changed much since the writing of Luke. It's a world where nations are in distress and confusion, and there is real fear in the world. But we, as the followers of Christ, are told to stand with our heads held high in expectation of what is coming. We are to stand in joyful expectation of the coming of our Savior. And where are we supposed to look for these things? We're supposed to look in the sun and the moon and the stars. And when I first heard that, I just thought, well, that's hogwash. I don't believe in horoscopes or astrology or anything like that. But then I thought about it for a moment. The sun and the moon and the stars are with us day in and day out. The sun and the moon and the stars are the things of the everyday. We're told to look at big trees, even at the trees. You see, the signs of our good news are all around us. They are the things of the everyday. God is doing new things around us each and every day. And Jesus invites us to be like children. Now, that's not in our gospel lesson today. That's from Matthew, so my apologies. 
but Jesus invites us to be childlike, to experience that awe and wonder of every moment. I want to make a distinction here. To be childlike is different than being childish. Childish is the stomping of the foot, the saying, I'm just not going to do that. The reluctance and resistance to everything that is not familiar. But childlike is the openness to all that is new, to the wonder around us at each moment, the curiosity of asking why, the asking what is it. That is being childlike, and we are invited to see that every day. And if that's not enough hope for us, Jeremiah has more. Jeremiah tells us today that the days are surely coming. Now, if any child knows this time of year, that is a message of real excitement. <laughs> because the day is surely coming. Christmas Day is coming. We get packages like this wrapped under the tree. We get excited. But the day is surely coming. Our redemption and our Savior is surely coming. And that is a message to get excited about. We are to be the ones, the childlike ones, who ask why, who are curious, who are in wonder and awe at the things around us, happening around us every day. Now as we look at St. Paul's, we might wonder, what does that mean for us? What does that mean for us here? Well, take a second. Take a second and look around. You can look around in your pews, look around at the church. I'm not going to continue until I see some heads turning around. <laughs> <laughs> As you're looking, you might see someone and you might wonder, what does that person want for me? What do I want for that person? Who is that person? <laughs> We may wonder, who's missing? Where can the church continue to grow? And how do we want to be a part of that growth? Now, I don't think so, but when we look at St. Paul's, do we just see an empty cardboard box? Something that can be discarded or broken down? If the answer is yes, then I'm going to let you tell my wife that we're going to be moving here shortly. <laughs> No, we are growing here at St. Paul's. And this stewardship season, which is wrapping up here in Advent, this stewardship season, we have said that we want to be a people of open doors, open hearts, and open hands. And as I said before, that is a message of profound hope in today's world. That is not a childish message. That is a message of people, of a people, who are childlike, who are open who are open to expectation of what God is doing in their midst, of the new things that God is bringing forth in our midst. And so, one place where I have learned this excitement is from my children. When they see a box on the front porch, I get excited now. I wonder, is it for me? Is it for Laurie? Is it a toy for my kids that I get to play with? But they're excited about so much more in life than just boxes and packages. Children are just naturally excited, and that excitement has worn off on me. One place is here. As I get to know each of you, I'm naturally curious about you. I want to know who are you? What are we going to do and experience together? And I know you've probably found yourselves asking similar questions about the people sitting around you. But it's my hope that as we approach this place, as we gather here each week over the next few weeks during Advent, that we will come with that joyful anticipation, that joyful expectation, expecting to find God who is bringing new possibilities into our midst, day in and day out, in the things of the everyday. Amen.